What would you do if your local grocery store closes? Just recently, major grocery stores in California announced they will be closing permanently. Why? Because local city councils are forcing those stores to give employees extra hazard pay during the pandemic. It's a 28% increase in labor costs. But those stores were already losing money, so now they're closing down for good. Expect to see more food supply issues like this in the near future. Ask yourself, could you go weeks or months without being able to buy food? Not unless you stockpile emergency food from My Patriot Supply, America's leader in survival food that stays fresh for up to 25 years in proper storage. I've arranged for you to save $70 off their popular four-week food kit that gives you 2,000 plus calories a day. Go to preparewithnatalie.com and you'll get the emergency food you need before the next emergency. Your four-week kit will arrive discreetly at your door in just a few days. Don't wait. Now is the time to prepare for the unexpected. Visit preparewithnatalie.com, preparewithnatalie.com. Muchachos y muchachas, last week we saw Amanda Ensing with the beauty industry. Her relationship with Sephora was canceled because of her dissenting views of the left and having strong Christian conservative principles. Well, this week... We're talking about Gina Carano. She plays Cara Dune in The Mandalorian. And now you might ask, what did Gina Carano do that would get her canceled? Well, it was honestly multiple things. Gina Carano was starting to be more outspoken on social media, especially on the Twitter platform, pointing to some of her viewpoints, such as the conflicting details of the pandemic, if you will, also voicing her concerns on the protocols and procedures of the election and how they must be more secure. But the post that absolutely did it was a post in which Gina Carano was making a a comparison. So I'm just going to paraphrase the content in which Gina Carano posted that got her fired off of Mandalorian. And that was a comparison of Nazi... Germany and it was before the actual Holocaust in which the post alluded to uh, the demonization of a particular sect of people the J- Jewish people how it it took a propaganda for their neighbors uh, their their family their friends you know they're, they're like a likely scenario to today in which normalized a hate and intolerance and divisiveness in the state of that country for those particular people. So let me tell you something in my opinion. Gina Carano is not far-fetched from her assessment or the, the content in which she posted. For example, you've got major media outlets like CNN and, you know, uh, anchors like Don Lemon and and Cuomo who will go on air and have the this dialogue talking about white men being a terror to this nation. Take a look for yourself. Bad things in the name of hate. Yeah. And then now another one. And you have all of them in a row. And, you know, we talked, we messaged about this a little bit this weekend. I keep trying to point out to people not to demonize any one group or any one ethnicity. But we keep thinking that the biggest terror threat is something else. Some, some, some people who are marching, you know, towards the border like it's imminent. And when the last time they did this, a couple hundred people came and they, you know, most of them did get into the country. Most of them tired, you know, got tuckered out before they even made it to the border. Um, so we have to stop demonizing people and realize the biggest terror threat in this country is white men, most of them radicalized right up to the right. And we have to start doing something about them. There is no travel ban on them. There is no ban on, you know, they had the Muslim ban. There is no white guy ban. So what do we do about that? of attacking terrorism at its root, of going after and killing, um, and in the case of Amr al awlaki an American, a Yemeni American, with a drone strike for the crime of inciting violence, inciting terrorism. Mitch McConnell was in the Senate then. He was in the Senate after 9-11 too. How does Mitch McConnell, who understands that the way you root out terrorism is to take on, in the case of Islamic terrorism, kill those who incite it, how does he not vote to convict someone that he said on the floor of the Senate 
incited an insurrection. So when you have news segments such as this one, night after night, and then you have propagandized influencers, celebrities, every single corporation out there that is repeating the same narrative somewhere down the line, you're going to get friends and family members that are going to be so indoctrinated that they don't care who they're connected to, who their brothers or sisters are, they will demonize them just as they are indoctrinated to do. Oh, but let's not stop there. If it is a crime to make any sort of Holocaust, uh, uh, you know, viewpoints and opinions in order to convey your political view, then why hasn't Pascal been fired? Although for the past four years, you've heard nothing but the left accusing Trump and his supporters of being Nazis and, you know, being these extremists and killers, if you will. And let's talk about this. Fifty Shades of Hypocrisy and Irony. Currently, right now, as we speak, a holocaust is going on in a province of China, Xinjiang. And this was a very specific location in which Disney set a movie recently, Mulan. In a tweet by Jeanette Ning, a journalist, she states, Mulan specifically thanks publicly the Department of CPC, Xinjiang, Uyghur Autonomous Region Committee in the credits. You know, the place where the cultural genocide is happening. They filmed extensively in Xinjiang, which the subtitles call Northwest China. Hashtag boycott Mulan. As their culture is now starting to fight back, Cancel Disney Plus was a trending hashtag that surfaced Twitter and social media in which you would see many people canceling their subscription to Disney Plus. Disney, are we going to address and maybe fire and correct the situation with multiple pedophilic events going on in the company as well as individuals, some of which you have rehired to do particular work? How about Brian Peck, a convicted child molester who worked on children's show The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody? Or how about Victor Salva, who molested a boy from the time he was 8 to 12 years old? It was graphically videotaped. He served a very short sentence. How about James Gunn? who, by the way, after being found out, deleted over 10,000 tweets, but before doing so was openly found tweeting about pedophilia. He obviously felt comfortable enough in his setting to do so. He was fired in the midst of the scandal, but later rehired to do Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Let's talk about your partnered network, such as ABC, in which ABC, who does host a very vibrant cackling show called The View, where Whoopi Goldberg defended Roman Polanski for raping a 13-year-old girl. She called it not being rape-rape. Was, was not charged. Rape. I know it wasn't rape-rape. Yeah, there is a statutory I, I, child molest, maybe? I'm I not think sure it was, child something, it was something else, but I don't believe it was rape-rape. And when we get all the information, somebody will tell me in my ear. All I'm trying to get you to understand mm -hmm. is when we're talking about what someone did and what they were charged with, we have to say what it actually was, okay, not so what we, we think it was. What he said he did. He gave her quaaludes, he gave mm -hmm. her champagne, mm -hmm. she was drugged, she was 13 years old. They were he asked her, here's a transcript. Beforehand. A and, but that's what I'm saying. You're 13 years she old. She was still a child. He initially, asked her, excuse me, initially he was charged with rape. Go ahead. And then he, he pled guilty to having sex with a minor. 
okay? And he went to jail, and when they let him out... 45 days. And when they let him out, he said, you know what, this guy's going to give me 100 years in jail, I'm not staying. And that's why he left. So that's why I wanted to be really clear, because I okay. wanted to know exactly what we were talking and about. I, and I'm going, does that make it okay to, to, you know, instead of staying and fighting, to say, you know, he's going to give me 100 years, I'm out of here. I don't know when it's okay. okay, but what we were talking about was what he did. And that's what I wanted to clear up. That's all I wanted to clear up. Because I don't like it when, we, when we're passionate about something and we don't have all the facts. Okay, so he was charged with statutory rape. So should he be prosecuted now? I believe yes, because the crime has not changed. I know she wants to move on, but there's so what does it say about uh, crimes that are still being committed against children? Well, she forgives him, but forgiveness is not permission. And forgiveness doesn't mean he didn't break the law. So I agree with you, Sherry. And but if we're segueing into ABC, your partner, let's let's talk about a few more little mishaps. How about your blatant Epstein cover up? When Amy Robach was caught on hot mic, talking about her frustration of having the Epstein story, having every single detail, guest, corroborative details, and yet someone high up, an ABC, an executive, Disney partner, Disney owned, blocked the story from being aired. She had pictures, she had everything. She was in hiding for 12 years. We convinced her to come out. First of all, I was told, who's Jeffrey Epstein? No one knows who that is. This is a stupid story. Um, then the palace found out that we had her whole allegations about Prince Andrew and threatened us a million different ways. And hey, Disney, since we're on the subject of Epstein, just a question. I mean, it's it's just a question. I, I don't know the answer to it, but hey, obviously Epstein at one point was such a very important person to your establishment at Disney World that he was given a VIP tour of the park and that someone was escorting him around from ride to ride, they said. The group never had to be in line for a ride or roller coaster. We went to the front of the line each time. Why was that? Or perhaps will you address ever any of these other high level executives of the Disney Corporation that have been convicted of pedophilia, pedophilia rings? I mean, hey, these are all valid questions, Disney. I, I'm just wondering. You fire one actress who voices her opinions true from her heart. But, Disney, I just wonder, is this a floodgate that could possibly open up a lot more into your establishment, your corporation, as well as the culture of your entire company? So guys, what do you guys know about Disney? Is this the Disney that you always knew? Is this the Disney that you grew up with? Anyways, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for your love and your support. If you think I do a good job, hey, there's some links in the description below that would really help me out in my endeavor to do this continuously. Thank you for watching this, and I will catch you in the next video.